please welcome co-founder and CEO of Hopper, Frederick Lalonde, in discussion with Skift founding editor and executive editor, Dennis Shaw. Hello, New York. Hello, interwebs. I hope you're going to help me with this interview because between you and me, Fred has a lot of energy and he's very enthusiastic about Hopper. Shock of shocks. Thanks for being here, Fred. Thanks for having me. So um, it's sort of deja vu all over again because last year we were at TWA Hotel for our conference and you were talking about uh, a Chinese app called Pinduo Duo. How do I, how do I say that? I think that's right. Okay. That's right. Uh, as the, the next big thing, it started out as a farmer's app to bring farm, farm goods online, e-commerce app, they started travel. I saw they just did last year 383 billion in revenue, uh, sort, of, sort of in the Amazon uh, neighborhood. So is China and the East still the center of uh, innovation in travel, or how do you look at it? I think, um, Asia, but specifically China, is the center of innovation in digital, in commerce, in content. I'll use TikTok as an example, Sheen recently. Um, the Asian uh, mobile ecosystem is actually innovating and completing a lot of the ideas in the West that we started to build out. And I believe that the patterns that we're seeing there are entirely applicable. And we're talking about social commerce. Right. Let's do the same survey. I did this last year. Mm -hmm. Raise your hand if you know what Pin Duo Duo is, please. Let the record show four hands. Raise your hand if you have it on your phone. <laughs> same three people. Um, if I did that question in anything, any conference in Asia, people would look at me like I'm crazy. It would be like asking, raise your hand if you know what Facebook is. So there's a huge, huge cleavage between of what a lot of these companies are doing out in Asia and what they're doing here um, until they come here and they become TikTok and they become the most watched social media. And so what we're really talking about is the fusion between social and commerce. And the, th the thesis is very simple. We 100% believe this is the future, is consumers in every category, including travel, will agree to engage with digital products on their phone through games and streaks and all these crazy things. Okay, let's in show a screenshot so what do you have of there? what you're talking about. Yep. So there we have, what are the tree to earn rewards? Yep. Okay, uh, what else we got? We have streaks, day three done and dusted, nice work. Is this what you mean about social commerce? Absolutely, commas? absolutely. That's in the very beginning. Way? How does it work? Yep, so the idea is you come in and you do something repetitive in what Google calls micro moments, like you're waiting for your latte at Starbucks, and you press that claim today's reward button, and if you miss a day, you lose the $10. But if you do it a couple of days straight, in this case a week, you get $10 of future booking credit. So Duolingo, some of you probably use this. In the West, it's the only real example of this. They took learning a language, which was, most people are too young to remember this, Rosetta Stone, right? A CD-ROM, this, for those millennials, it was a piece of plastic that contained stuff, right, that you would order, by the way, right? And so you would pay $600 every seven years because you were taking a trip to Italy, and then, Duolingo comes along and they turn it into 125 million daily active users. Now they're profitable, they're public. And what they would do is the owl would nag you to learn another Japanese character or some Italian words for bacon. And so fundamentally, this is called engage to earn. So you come in and you do something that you would do anyway. So you water this tree and it grows and then there's this secret chest that opens up and it contains vouchers and coupons. And this is actually what will replace the established e-commerce players in travel, in my opinion. And there's a whole new generation of people that are going to do this, but one that underpins it is that it makes the cost of booking your travel cheaper because you put thing, in the work. Fred, the, the, the big challenge for leisure travel companies, which is prim primarily what you're doing, is people book vacations once or twice a year, okay? So now you're having them come back, Okay, you're trying to get them to come back every day. You're giving them carrot cash. Um, 
are they booking vacations four or five times a year? What are, what are they doing? Exactly. So when's your next vacation, your leisure one? Where are you going? Uh, next month, I'm going to Italy. Right. Everybody knows what their next trip is. Mm -hmm. And everybody is waiting for a latte at Starbucks. And so you scroll Instagram, but you get nothing for it. So come in and water a tree. It's, it's really <laughs> that simple. Like, is that like a carbon offset? Uh, actually, this one is going to be, so we do hopper trees, which is a thing, okay. and I have, to, I have to put this there. So we took a decision four years ago to offset all of the carbon of everything we sell by planting trees off of our P&L. You don't have to contribute. We do it. We've planted over 20 million trees. We have spent millions on this, and I've challenged every other travel CTO. I see you know, Peter and Glenn to do the same thing. And so there's a whole thing there that we've been doing. Um, and we, we send people to Mozambique. I have a picture of a tree on our phone. We're making sure they're growing. It, like, this, we, we have this whole commitment. Around it. And this one, what we basically want to do with it is we're also going to accelerate the, that. But what it is is that little chest unlocks and you get stuff. And so we started this process last year. I'll give you an example. It's very, very early. We see people seven times a week when they're doing streaks. Of course, it's a streak, right? It's, and so then what do they do once they're finished streaking? Well, they're in the app, so they start browsing deals. And because they press that button, every single thing got cheaper. So there's a small population that do this. We also have an engage to earn. You can post a story on Instagram with a code, and you can basically earn literally thousands of dollars for your next trip. Uh, and we have people that have done that. So fundamentally, we have this subgroup of users that have engaged with this, because some, you know, it's like testing and we're trying to figure this out. It's so wild, we don't actually understand what we're doing here. And so that population behaves completely differently than every customer we've ever had there. I want desperately to be the CEO of that company, the one that actually <laughs> is doing that. Last example. We were notorious for not spending any money on search, on AdWords. We still don't do that. Well, I'm gonna ask, I was going to ask you, how does this fit into yeah. your marketing strategy? How much do you spend on marketing? Yeah. So, you know, we were spending a couple hundred million dollars, mm -hmm. like, last year. So, first of all, the money was flowing. It was much easier to raise. But moreover, we were heavily invested in social media. Right. Um, and probably a lot of you got some of our stuff. We have an interesting guy in a bunny suit running around on Instagram, all this crazy stuff. But Last year, we were TikTok's largest advertiser in the US, not just in travel, everywhere. Today, our, our paid spend is almost at zero. We are giving the same money we gave to Mark Zuckerberg and TikTok to our customers in the form of tree watering games, and it is working an order of magnitude better, but at a very small scale. So, we'll so see Fred, so somebody tweeted at me yesterday. I was talking to Glenn Fogel of uh, Booking Holdings. Uh, Dennis is trying to get uh, Glenn to take the bait to bash the competition. But you just said social commerce is going to replace all the incumbents. And um, I should point out, you guys now claim to be the number three flight uh, booker uh, in North America. So who are you going to replace? So number one is Expedia, number two is Fair Portal, Cheapo Air, and you, you guys now claim to be third. Yeah, so on, on air, um, and this is actually, there's, there's structured data around this right. um, called MIDT, which is boring. And so we, we are number three in the US. We're probably going to pass. The other ones are you know Priceline and Fair Portal. So we're probably going to pass those. That's just a mathematical curve of run rate. What really matters, as you know, is the hotel business, because that's where you build the loyalty. That's where you can build the share shift. Um, and we are, we are fundamentally working to become a multi-category platform, which we're getting better at. We're starting homes and all this other stuff. And so there we're smaller, but if we continue to grow at the rates that we were growing, and especially if any of this social commerce insanity that we, all these blinking bunnies and these things start working out, you could see us compounding easily to be the number three OTA pretty much in every major market. This time last year, um, well, I'll call international, which is While somebody- While spending nothing on marketing. With, by, well, spending you know, hundreds of millions to our users in marketing, right? right? Because the growth is organic at that point, but not giving it to a third party platform is one thing, which is the holy grail. I mean, you know, Dara and P how many years, right? Do all the CEOs come up here and say, we have to spend less on Google? Well, right? Peter said uh, last week that the marketing funnel was actually a sieve. Sieve. I buy that. 
you know, but that's why we don't do it. Um, and so, anyway, fundamentally, we're probably going to end up being, um, you know, number three. The reason I know this is last year when I was on stage, about 2% of our, of our bookings, of our traffic was international, and that means somebody booking from uh, a location outside of North America. I don't mean a, a Canadian or an American going to Mexico. I mean somebody in Europe or Asia or Latin America. Today, 20% of our business originates outside of, uh, of North America. Right. And those markets are growing faster than the US relative. And you know what's driving that? It's social commerce. In Europe and in Latin America, 20% of our bookings come from social commerce, up from zero. Now, the absolute number is, is puny, even at our current scale. But if you draw that line forward a few years, you end up with a very, very large global social commerce company. So you said that it's all about hotels, right? So um, do the chain, how, how are you different in working with hotel chains than, than some of the competition? Are you competing against them with the, you know, the carrot cash and the discounting and that kind of thing? Yeah, so first thing is we don't advertise on Google. We don't really play on Meta on any scale. We do a tiny bit of it. And our strategy is nothing to do with going in and saying that our rate is $2 lower, so you come to the website and having a back-end fee. We tend to be fairly friendly on the distribution because we're building our own direct channel. So that's, at least you don't start with an antagonistic like position where you're buying their keywords and all this crazy stuff. Um, the second part of it is the reason we are able to grow is because of our fintech products. And right. so our global strategy, about that. yeah, it's very simple, is when consumers come to Hopper, they spend an average of $50 more to buy the same travel stuff that they could buy anywhere else. This is new money. Explain to them how that works. Yeah, so you could freeze a hotel room, a price, before it goes up. You can take a non-refundable hotel and make it refundable by Hopper. And so that if you decide not to go, you swipe your money is back in your account in seconds. You can buy disruption protection. This is one of my favorite ones. You arrive at the airport. So you like all the disruption that's going on. I don't like the disruption, um, but I like, fan of fact, airline I like cancellations. I like admit it. Fred. I like anxiety. I think yes. anxiety. Is High anxiety. I love. So I was anxiety. saying to Glenn yesterday. He wants people to chill. We got your back. It's the connected trip. You want people to have a lot of anxiety. I want people to be worried that the logistics around the trip might not be great, and I want to provide a complete delightful antidote to anything going wrong at a price point that- So you're like a casino. About. You're betting that the, 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 feist, the price doesn't go up too much. Uh, uh, no, actually everybody's chipping in $5, and if your price goes up, we make you whole. So it's not my money, right? We're not, we're not actually doing that. What we're doing is we're saying, look, um, it's not exactly an all we're on this together, but that's how any regulated insurance work. Everybody puts some money down and they buy these products and sometimes prices go up, sometimes they don't. When they go up or when your flight is disrupted, I might take $1,000 out of pocket and give it to American Airlines to make up the difference between your ticket. So we have moved tens of millions of dollars a quarter to hotels, to hotel chains, to airlines to compensate for the difference between what the customer decided to purchase and what ended up happening. If so I which, take, which, which one of these uh, products are you losing tons of money on? Uh, anything new we try <laughs> blows up in our face. So cancel <laughs> for any reason at the hotel is a new one. Yep. Uh, uh, you know, you show up to the hotel, oh, it's leave for any reason. So you're losing money on that? On the first couple of months. Now those are actually a year old because they, right. we test really, really small. So the trick is obviously you release it to a small group, you right. lose a lot of money on a few people, you figure out what you did wrong, then you scale. If right. you do it the other way around, that's bad. So you go with a... And you're making, like, around the world, you're making about 30% of your revenue on these fintech products? Closing on 40, actually. On air, it's 50. Because Travel is so overrated. Fintech's where the money is. So Basically, anything that you can sell to a customer base that lowers the price, lowers the anxiety, and actually works. And so this is the hard part, right? If you end up and your flight was disrupted, the way the disruption product works is you open the Hopper app, every flight leaving that airport of any airline says zero dollars, you tap, you board. 
No calling, no waiting, no queuing, right? How much do you want to buy this now, right? And so th that took three years to build with deep relationships with Sabre and Amadeus to, to figure out. And so what we learned during the pandemic is if you say that you're going to do something and then they need it, and it doesn't work, you've done the worst possible thing you could do. So the reason that these products are working is partially because we know how to sell them, but more importantly, they work when you need them. And so we have a huge support team, and a lot of what they do is, is figuring, figuring out that stuff out. But 80% of the time, everything is seamless, from getting your money back instantly to getting rebooked. Leave for any reason. So if this is the holy grail, why aren't more companies copying you? So they are. They're starting to work on it. Yep. Um, a lot of the Google says they're not interested. You have to be in the transaction. Okay. Right. Mm -hmm. Amazon's not interested in travel because warehouses don't really help, and it's probably the right decision. Mm -hmm. um, you know, the the other players are making a lot of money with their models. Look, I am super jealous of Expedia and Booking because they're. Great business, super profitable. Look, you take five billion, you put it into Google, and you get seven back. Right. Like, well, who doesn't want to do that, right? Well, Glenn was talking about the massive profits they make. They do, and it's yeah. amazing. Mm -hmm. And they're very good at it, and they deliver a good service. But we think that FinTech unlocks between 200 and 400 billion dollars worldwide of new customer spend in the ecosystem. It's a little tricky to build. You got to figure out, but there's no. I saw doubt your signage building. all over the place. Partner with us, fintech, three times the profits. Do you like free money? That's the pitch. I like free money. Everybody likes free money. <laughs> um, vacation rentals. You you recently started doing vacation rentals. Why? Two things. Why should somebody book on Hopper? for vacation rentals, and why should somebody partner with Hopper? So the, the first part, um, the reason we're doing it is not because it's cool, it's not because, it's because our customers that come in for these games and use the mobile app as their primary commerce tool, they're twice as likely to stay in a home than a hotel, right? right? Full stop, so it's all customer driven. If the percent of people that stay in a home in LA is 11% or some number like that, I'm not sure what it is, but it's pretty close, Hopper customers are 22% going to stay there. So we need to have this for our customers. What we learned is Airbnb is formidable. It's just a formidable company. They've done an amazing job because what, no matter what anybody says to you on stage or anywhere else, it is not true that the entire vacation rental space is about managed properties, these groups, these conglomerates. The, like, the individual host is essential to getting the price point lower. Airbnb has an Unbelievable. But you're you're partnering with these properties. We are going companies. block party, throwing a party in an alley, individual host, one city at a time, one neighborhood at a time for the next one million years until we get it right. So one of the attractive things about Hopper uh, supposedly is who your customer is. It's a really a younger clientele. Um, how do you do that? So you're not you're not uh, Gen Z, are you? Right? No, God no. Right. I think we're about the same age. Yeah, so. no, I'm not even millennial. I'm, I'm the thing before that nobody cares about. <laughs> yeah, no, no. Um, yeah, fundamentally, um, there's a couple of things. The Hopper app itself is um, appeals to a younger demographic, of course. Part of it is just it's an app. The other thing is all this crazy bunny stuff. Like so, but we we do bad bunny. Uh, bad bunny, good bunny, bunny okay. on Instagram, <laughs> bunny on TikTok. So, you know, it's a very deliberate thing. And so there's a reason you do that is because the millennial um, one and two, there's something called an elder millennial now. I don't know if you knew this. Like no. It's a millennial that's over 40. Um, so, and then you have millennial two, which are the younger ones. And then Gen Z is a complete dislocation. If you have teenagers, you, you understand this. So theoretically, all we'd have to do is wait. Like, all guys like us die, and then Hopper has all the customers. So there is a, there is a momentum to, to catering to that generation, which is one thing. So after we die, how, 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 do, you maintain, how do you maintain that? How do you stay, I mean, every company w um, wonders about how do you stay cool? You know, how do you keep it going? What, what's your take on that? So um, it, it's all about, and, and this is not even a travel or Hopper thing, when you were created, like what was important, right? So Expedia, I was there before, and um, you know, was the hotel business was built in 2001. So terrible tragedy happened here, but then people were actually afraid of flying. Hotels needed distribution. Airbnb was created for real. It started getting traction 2008, 2009, 10. If you look at their inflection point, a half of the home values in the U.S. were under their under their 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 their, their mortgage rate. 
Um, and so you have these crises that create these companies. What we're seeing now is there are two generations, which are the largest generations in history, that are starting to ascend to economic power, and they do everything through their phone. Right? So, you know, and now we're probably entering a recession. We're not feeling any of it now. Business is great. Everybody's traveling. I don't think You think I... it's coming and oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. how are you preparing? Oh yeah. oh, yeah. Well, the first thing is you got to cut your burn rate. So it's no longer right. cool to, and th this is where my deep jealousy for the profits of our competitors comes from. <laughs> they make money, which is great. So we got to close the gap. We're not burning a lot compared to a lot of these crazy things that you've mm -hmm. seen recently, but we're not profitable. We need to get there. That's one thing. The second thing is you need to grow faster with less paid spend because that's how you get profitable, which has to do with check-ins and bunnies and loot boxes and all this other stuff. And then the third thing is you need to be global. And the reason that matters at a real scale is because um, if I'm in food delivery, shipping sushi in Rio de Janeiro doesn't help me with my New York business. But if I'm in travel and somebody uses me in Rio and they come to New York, that's the high AOV, the high stay. Everybody wants that. So we got to become a global company. And then the third pillar of our growth is Hopper and Cloud. You, and you're... And you're um you're making some small acquisitions? We do team acquisitions. Acquisitions. So, yeah. Um, and sometimes they're a little bigger than, you know, between 50 to five, something like that. Um, a lot of what we've done, like our car business, Hopper Cloud, which powers Capital One and all these other things. We have a question um, about Capital One. Yep. How do you, audience question, how do you balance your direct to consumer approach and support of Capital One's travel initiatives? Uh, we have separate teams on everything, not just Capital One. Um, we run a model called single-threaded ownership, so we don't have VP layers, we don't have heads of product, we don't have a CMO, we don't even really have a head of HR. Um, every team runs independently, um, and we don't allow them to talk to each other, collaborate. We are fully virtual, we don't meet, we don't have offices. Everybody does the best thing for their customer. And does, does Hopper, the, uh, Capital One, do they have your FinTech products? They are rolling some of them out. And what about more, vacation more rentals? That, I would love to get up there. Our product is too crappy right now to put it on Capital One. We need to do the hard work to get it there. Wow. How do you, another audience question, we got 30 seconds. How do you envision a collaboration with a destination? Um, we've been doing a lot of social commerce initiatives. So there's a lot of uh, destinations that basically want you to come because you will drop $1,600 in tax revenue on average or whatever number it happens to be for you know something in the Caribbean. and we can actually put a voucher for Puerto Rico, a place that you're familiar with, in a loot box. And so we've done these crazy things. Maybe some of you have seen it. Like, these are flash sales. So you have two days, three days. Um, and so the last one we did, we did a, a loot box, which is a, it's like a treasure chest that you open, but you have to buy it. And there was like a small, a medium, and a large one. Think of a game, like a casual game where you would do this. Um, and they ranged between, I think it was $3 and 14 we sold more loot boxes than flights on that day. And we sell a lot of flights, right? Like, right. it was like, it's, people were coming to me with this data, and I'm like, that's wrong. Like, that's not possible. And because when you open this thing up, you had more carrot cash than you spent, and then these destination vouchers, and it's kind of a mystery. You don't know what you're buying. It's kind of cool. And so you ended up with, like, $200 off your flight to Puerto Rico, for example, in there. Right. And so... Fred yeah, go ahead. I have to close the loop since we're out of time. It was a pleasure. It was fun. Download Pinduoduo. <laughs> You'll love it. <laughs> More people will know it next year.